Research and Innovation in Futuris. Maybe in the future, more houses will be like this one in our house, Denmark. Here, around 50 people are living in revolutionary homes that use energy in a new way. I've lived in a house once where there was, uh, it was very old and there was a lot of uh, uh, holes in the walls, so I, uh, it was very cold. And I also had to use a lot of sweaters. But here it is very warm, always because there's a good isolation. In terms of costs, it means cutting heating bills from over 200 euros a month to less than 50, even if it's really cold. We have solar cells uh, for the the out uh, the light outside, and for the the house in common that we have where we can have parties and so on, and for our washing room. Uh, but uh, if there were solar cells too on the top of the roof, that would be perfect because then then we could we had then we couldn't spare a lot of electricity too. These buildings use up to 70% less energy than conventional ones, thanks to the technologies defined in the SHE, Sustainable Housing in Europe project, a European Union research project involving four different countries. It's quite simple. It's very, very simple to save energy. We know how to do it. You can see here we have used nearly 100% renewable materials. The materials, 90% uh, of the houses is made from wood. Here in Vienna, in Austria, another European Union research project is designing the city of the future, taking into account all sorts of modern preoccupations, climate change, CO2 emissions and land use. Ten years from now, all new buildings in Vienna will be zero energy buildings. So this is an improvement of the building standards that is going on. This is the edge of the city and it tends to become suburban, low density uh, kinds of settlements on the outskirts of the city and this should be avoided. The city of Vienna, of course, attempts that, but there still are many holes to be filled. According to analysts, the urban areas of Vienna will expand by 54% over the next 40 years, covering an extra 100 square kilometers of land. But with this new approach, the same growth will only cover 20 square kilometers. So far in, in urban development, we have more or less disparate approaches, like transportation planning is one thing, uh, energy efficiency of buildings is another, and then designing in architectural and quality terms is a third approach. We try with this project, we see how in the future uh, development of cities these target, these approaches can be combined. Using the principles of urban metabolism, researchers have defined some critical points where action can dramatically cut environmental impact. If you can do three or four trips per day exactly in one area like this, without going around the town, you do not have to use a car. And then you have, of course, much less use of energy. You do not have CO2 emissions. You do not have to use that much land. 
So this is very efficient in, in many ways. The Sustainable Urban Metabolism for Europe project runs in partnership with institutions from nine countries and two continents. It aims to design a model for towns of the future. Back here in Denmark, they're researching how to reduce energy consumption and pollution. They're also raising awareness about ecological issues. If you live here, you can contribute to the planet. And I, I, I think that's, that's quite a point. But it's so far away from the city that you must have a car. So I think that, uh, that uh, if we could have uh, common cars or something like that, it would be perfect. The Aarhus experience has resulted in interaction with local policies. Using the same approach, the city of Aarhus is drafting the next steps. We also want to make new cities. We will have four cities in the pipeline and they are all related to a new trams uh, light rail system. So in this way, the next, the coming new citizens in Aarhus, when they live there, they can actually go by a new tram system. They can live in a house which is sustainable, like the one you saw in this afternoon. The project also involves Italy, Portugal and France, where there are more pilot experiments. Seeing the economic and ecological sustainability of the results, new projects are now starting all over Europe. We have created the possibility for the politicians to say, now it's not a fiction anymore, it's a fact. Now we can change the building regulations, all the laws, the building laws, towards this kind of project. Housing and city living are two of the biggest culprits when it comes to environmental damage. Greener houses and sustainable cities are two steps towards reducing that damage.